I certainly appreciate being here this morning. Uh, appreciate what I feel in my heart. And I feel like, uh, appreciate uh, the Sunday school teaching this morning. I appreciate the songs and just the, the good presence of God. Uh, it's good today when you can come together and feel the presence of God. And I, I'm thankful of that. I've got uh, two different places I'm going to read this morning. Uh, and I want to ask us all uh, a simple question. And I guess the question is, what are we investing in? And I want us to look tonight, uh, this morning, for just a few minutes and uh, at the men. I want the men to look and see what we're investing in. I want the women to look and see what they're investing in. And I want uh, the church as a whole to see uh, what we are investing in. And I, I've thought about this for several, several months and uh, been praying and praying the Lord. Seems like he's going to give me liberty uh, to go this way this morning. But first I want to read in Mark uh, chapter number 8. I'm going to read two little verses there and then I'm going to go uh, to Matthew chapter number 6. And that's where I'll be preaching from. Uh, but I, I just want us to look at this. What are we investing in today? And Mark chapter number 8, and verse number 36 and 37, Jesus said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And then we turn to Matthew chapter number 6, and I'm going to start reading at verse 19. And he said, Lay not up your treasures... Uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. <laughs> but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, does, do, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt or, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You can be seated. Now, begin to look at this and I will look for just a minute on what investing really is. And I, I've thought about this a lot. Many people today, uh, they're investing in their jobs. They're investing in their careers. Uh, they're investing in lands and stocks and bonds and everything else that under the sun like that. They're worried about uh, what they're going to leave behind financially, what they're going to uh, gather together in this world. And I read about in the Bible a man that his crops came in plenty. And he had invested in building new barns. He had invested in uh, tearing everything that he had down and building new uh, so that he could put his crops in there and live the rest of his life. But the Bible said that night uh, the Lord spoke to his heart and the Lord spoke to him and said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. So uh, look at what he was invested in. He was invested today in things that were temporal, things that were temporary. And I believe today that each and every one of us need to be investing in the right kind of things. And I believe that as a man, I've got different things to invest in. As a woman, uh, you've got different things. They're all similar today, and they're all uh, go together today. But we've got things that we've got to invest in. And I thought about as I was studying this, brother, I, what this is actually meaning. I, and when we invest in something, we put it there and we hope uh, to get a return and, and to invest in something. And I want you to pay close attention. When you invest in something, in something uh, you've got to give of yourself. Uh, you've got to give time. You've got to give of yourself. And sometimes... Uh, you even got to give some money. Sometimes you even got to uh, do that. But I, I thought about how that our men are portrayed in our society today and how that uh, uh, people look at the, at the typical man. And uh, back in the 1950s, 1940s, 1950s, you can uh, watch those television programs and you can see how uh, that a man was portrayed then. And now you turn on of the TV and see how they're portrayed. Every single time uh, they'll be portrayed as a weak vessel. Uh, they'll be portrayed as some goofy person, somebody uh, that's foolish, somebody that ain't got enough sense uh, to do anything, somebody that's in pain, uh, somebody that, uh, uh, brother, just afraid of everything around them. That, and when you really get down to that, you say, preacher, uh, that's just a television program. That's just something like that. I'm telling you something. That's the way 
our society uh, sees the modern man today. That's the way uh, we're looking. I would to God that our men uh, would invest in the right things today. I, I would uh, uh, brother, that our churches and our uh, women and our families would start investing in the right thing. And as we get into the scripture here, uh, Jesus said, lay not up uh, for yourselves treasures upon earth uh, where moth, and I'm going to use my word, uh, moth and rust and these things can get in and corrupt it. But brother, you and I I need to lay up our treasures in heaven today. Uh, that stuff can't get in there. Uh, that stuff can't get rot, uh, rust and moth and all those things that uh, cannot touch the treasures that you're putting in heaven today. And he said, for where your treasure is, uh, there will your heart be also. I'm going to tell you, uh, brother, whatever you uh, treasure the most in this world, whatever uh, you treasure the most is what you're going to invest in. Uh, that's what's going to be in your heart today. Uh, I thought about today what our men need. We look around. I even taught on it the other day on uh, the YouTube channel just a little bit. It ain't only right here at Mount Olive Baptist Church, uh, but it's every church that you go in, Brian. Uh, you don't see many men in God's house anymore. <laughs> uh, we look back through here and we've got uh, women and children and we've got two men here this morning. Uh, brother, that's typical uh, through our land and country now. Uh, brother and I tell you, we need to get back to the word of God. Uh, we need men that will get back and start investing in the right thing. I wonder how many of our men that are members right here today are out, out in the woods of hunting. I wonder how many men that's even members right now is just laying around the house uh, waiting for uh, some game or some uh, race or something like that to come on television uh, today and not in uh, the house of God today. I believe I tell you my friend uh, we put everything else uh, we've invested in so many other things uh, that brother is showing on our people today our men uh, uh, brother we've stepped out of the hedge and we've let down the gap and brother I believe that every single problem uh, you listen I'll get some criticism over there I know I will but every single problem uh, that ever happens in church every single problem uh, that ever happens in the home uh, listen and listen good it rests on this shoulder of a man today. Amen. It's a man's responsibility to be a leader. But what kind of a leader do I need to be? What kind of a leader do you need to be? What do we need to be investing in? Brother, first and foremost today, we need to be invested in godliness. We need godly men. I need to be a godly preacher. Brian needs to be a godly man. Brother Vernon has got to be a godly man. These other men, uh, we've got to start investing in that. Uh, but don't worry about the stock market. It's going to crash again one day anyway. And don't worry about laying up treasure uh, down in the bank, brother. It's going to be done away with uh, one day anyway. Lay up your treasures this morning in heaven. How do you do that, preacher? Uh, brother, as I said, we've got to start investing in godliness in our life, in our churches, brother. Uh, we need godliness down here. Uh, you women today, uh, you need to be invested in godliness. How do I do that, preacher, first and foremost? Uh, brother, we've got to have that relationship uh, with Christ Jesus. We must uh, be born again. You can't be a godly man, a godly woman, or a godly church without being born again, without being saved by God's grace. Uh, so first and foremost, have that uh, relationship. And then, brother, uh, we've got to have an open prayer line as Brian was teaching this morning. Uh, we've got to pray and seek in the face of God. No wonder the writer said if my people which are called to my name uh, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear uh, from heaven I'll heal their son. Uh, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. I'll hear them today if they'll do that. Uh, so brother we need to get back and I'm praying and praying and praying until we get through. Uh, praying until we get a hold of God. Uh, praying until I, I can get sin out of my life. You get sin out of your life. And we become that godly person that God wants us to be. Then, brother, we're going to have to get this word. 
You cannot be a godly man. You can't be a godly woman. Uh, we can't have a godly church without the Word of God. Amen. It will not happen. Never has happened. And it never will happen. I, and I quote this a lot. I know I do, but I, I probably sound uh, like a broken record, but that's all right too. Because uh, it's the Word today. It's the Word of God. And that's why Paul said, study to show thyself approved. A workman of God that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. I can pin out this word of God, and I can cut uh, through it and pick out a place here and a place there, and I can pretty much prove any doctrine out there. But that ain't what he said to do. He said, study to show thyself approved. A workman of God, rightly divide the word of truth. I've seen many preachers, and you have too, they get took off, they'll take one little verse or one little portion of a verse and they'll start a complete doctrine out of that. But we've got to rightly divide God's word and we've got to rightly uh, put it in this place and we can't do that if we don't study. If we don't, and that's how we've got to get our God with us. That's the way I've got to uh, grow as a Christian is to study, pray. And I'm going to say this, I can't be a godly man sitting at the house at church time. Amen. You can't be a godly woman at the house, uh, sitting in the house during church time. And we can't be a godly church if we lock the doors up. We can't do that. We've got to press on. And I know there's things that will come up in your life and come up in my life and that will hinder us sickness and, and different things like that will hinder us. But we've got uh, to continually move forward. Well, I, what are we investing in today? I, I said it not last week. I guess we're in a battle uh, for our babies. I, and I, I'll tell you, I, Hunter deserves a godly pastor. Uh, John and Emily and the other children, uh, they deserve a godly pastor. Uh, they deserve godly men and godly women women right here and then lead them the right way. We got to start investing in godliness. And I thought about as a man, this is why, this is where it boils down. It's where the rubber beats the road, folks. We see troubles in homes and we see troubles in church. We see troubles with husbands and wives and every single one of those problems rests on the man's shoulders. You say, preacher, I don't know about that. I'm telling you, it rests on the man. So get in God's word and study it out. Uh, and you'll find this out yourself. But brother, as a man today, I've got to start investing in my wife more. You've got to start investing in your wife. You want to be godly. Uh, you've got to do that. You women, you've got to invest in your men. I, I'm going to tell you something. When, uh, when me and Amy got married, and I ain't always been a preacher. I ain't always been a godly man. I ain't always strived to be a godly man. Uh, but brother, when we got married in 1994, I realized this, even uh, out of the will of God, I realized uh, that, brother, if I wanted to invest in a family, if I wanted uh, to invest in my wife, you know what that means for Rocky? I've got to get rid of things myself. I've got to put her before me. I've got to be willing to protect her. I've got to give up my needs. I've got to give up my wants. I've got to give up my desires as a man and invest in my wife. Amen. Amen. You don't hear this preached anymore. Amen. But it's still the truth. Why do we have so many divorces around our land and country? Because husbands are not investing in their wife for whatever reason. You expect it from the world. But that's where it boils down to. In the homes. In the Christian homes. The man is not doing his part. The man is not investing his things in the right place. And in turn, I, I preached this not long ago. When I was preaching on wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. That's a, you, you can get a lot of people mad if you had. That's why Paul said to rightly divide the word of truth. It didn't mean that I'm to take a belt and make Amy do what I say. It don't mean that I'm her boss. It don't mean that uh, when we got married, she traded one daddy for another. Uh, that's not what that means at all. Uh, but I promise you, if I'm leading and I'm loving and I'm nurturing and I'm providing uh, the way this book tells me to and I'm investing in her like I'm supposed to be, then it's no problem for her to do her part. That's why you've got rebellion in the homes. 
We're not investing in the right things. We've got men that would rather be on the mountaintop than spending time with their wife. It's my job, and I, I'm taking myself out of the pastorship role here for just a minute. But it's my job as a husband to be the spiritual priest of my home. Now we look at that. You come to this altar and you pray. You know I'll be here on this altar with you. I'm your pastor. And I know there's pastors that don't do that. But flip that around when Amy needs leadership and when she needs prayer and when she needs uh, study and she needs somebody to lift her up and she needs somebody to pray a hedge around her and she needs somebody to go into the closet alone and go to battle for her, brother, as the priest of my home. That is my duty. Amen. That's my job. Amen. And if you, hey, listen, you might be listening on YouTube. And you might be thinking about marriage. If you ain't willing to do that, don't get married. Amen. 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 If you're not willing to give up yourself yeah. for this, and it's not going to work because you're still investing yeah. in the wrong thing. You're investing in yourself. Hey, I'm telling you, before I got married, and I, there's not a thing wrong with hunting, fishing, yeah. having hobbies things like that. And you can ask anybody that knows me before I got married, I coon hunted every single night. That's what I wanted to do. But I'll tell you what, when I uh, when I figured out what I wanted to invest in, that stuff slowed way, way down. I had to invest in the right things. Now, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm not a perfect man. I've made many mistakes in the last 28 years as a husband, as a dad, as a preacher. But I'm thanking God today for the lessons that I've learned in all those times. All those things that I've done wrong and I invested in the wrong things. I thank God that He let me grow through it. We've got to invest in it. Women, you've got to invest in your husbands. You've got to invest in your children. Uh, us men, we've got to invest in them. I, I said it last week. Actually, that was a whole message uh, last week. Let's go to battle for them. But dads, it's time that we be dads. It's time that we lead them. We've got, hey, if, if you don't teach Hunter to be a boy, uh, to be a man, bro, the world's going to teach him to be a woman. Amen. Hey, we live in a society that, brother, our men today, would rather sit and play, stay, uh, play the PlayStation and the video game as to put on work boots and get out there and provide. Amen. And we and we take advice from these folks that don't even know what kind of a bathroom to go in. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. Amen. What are we investing in? Bless we need to invest in these babies. Yes. As a man, I've got to invest in our children. As a woman, you've got to invest in these children. Yes. And brother, I'll tell you what, and that goes what I said a while ago. When I invest in something, I've got to give of myself. I've got to commit some time to them. Yeah. And I've got to deny a lot of my world, a lot of my needs, a lot of my wants if I'm going to invest in them. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? I'm going to look at natural for just a minute. You've got $100 in your pocket and you want to invest in the stock market and you take 50 of that and you invest it in the stock market. You've got $50 cash and you've got $50 in the stock market or in a CD or is it tied up in a mutual fund or something like that. You've got 50 in cash and you've got 50 there. But you've invested that 50 Where's your heart going to be at? Are you going to worry about that $50 cash or are you going to worry about, worry about what you're investing in? I promise you, you'll be worrying about that money that's invested. Whether you're going to lose it. What can I do to keep me from losing it? What can we do this morning to keep us from losing these children? What can I do this morning to keep families from busting up? What can I do this morning 
as your pastor to invite to unite this church. Am I willing to invest? I'll tell you then, we've got to invest in our church. Right? If we don't invest in this church, it's going to dwindle away. If we don't, and I, and I said a while ago, that means our time. That means our energy. That means in our, reaching in our billfolds from time to time. Let's fully be committed. Let's fully invest. This, I, I preached Thursday night about a vision and where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy as he. I, I still got that same vision, church. I still got the same vision I had in August of 2021. I still got it for Mount Olive. And it's worth investing in. But is that where we're putting our investment? And I believe with all my heart, before I can start investing in the Mount Olive Baptist Church the right way, I've got to get some godliness in my life. I've got to invest in godliness. I've got to have my home in order. I've got to invest in my wife the right way, my children the right way. And then when I start putting it into the church and I start investing into God's house and into God's work, uh, brother, I'm going to tell you that it won't be in vain and it will do a wonderful, uh, powerful uh, work if we'll do it that way. And the, this works for the men. This works for the women. And this will work for our church. So what are we, what are we investing in as our church? Our church needs to be investing in godly men. We need to be investing in godly women. We need to be promoting that and doing whatever it takes to get to that godliness. And we get to that godliness as a church the same way, through prayer, through study, through reading God's Word and having that relationship with God. That's the way we get there. And then we need the best in these children. Mount Olive Baptist Church needs to invest in these children. We need to take the time. We need to take the energy. We need to take every resource we've got for these children. They're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church today. And brother, I tell you, we need to look at this community. We need to invest in this community. You say, preacher, how do I do that? Why would I do that? I'm going to tell you. This community is just like the one I live in. You don't have to go very far to find an alcoholic. You don't have to go very far to find a dope head. You don't have to go very far to find a whore or a whoremonger. You don't have to go far to find the evils of this world. But they are worth saving. Amen. Paul said, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about the different fornicators, adulterers, drunkards, revilers. He even calls out the homosexuals and the perverts and all these other folks and said that they that do such shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But then he followed that up. And he said, and such were some of you. I came from that same stock they did. I wasn't nothing but an alcoholic, dope head and a whoremonger. But God had mercy. And in God's eyes, I was worth saving. Your lost people is worth saving. I don't care what they're doing right now. They're worth saving. And they're worth uh, this church investing in. And I'll promise you this, and I'm closing. If we don't invest in them, the devil will. Amen. Amen. If we don't, the devil will. So what would we give in exchange for their soul? What would we give in exchange for these children's souls? And where's our heart at today? I'll promise you, your heart right now is where your treasure's at. I'll promise you that. Whatever you treasure most in this world, that's where your, treasure, your heart's going to be at during this service. And I want to say, 
Go ahead and give a song. Everybody sang, but she's coming. Let's make, let's put forth the right investment. You say, preacher, I've invested in so many wrong things in my life. I have too. I have that. I'm guilty. There's been times past I've invested in the wrong things. But I can't dwell on that. I had to repent. I had to get things right with God and move on. But if you've invested in the wrong things and you've realized that this morning, you come, give it to the Lord. Let's take up our cross and let's follow Him today. Go ahead. Now.